I think we should be good now. Jack, how are you? Petro's here. Alan, good morning. Good afternoon, actually. Funny voting. Well, not holding my breath for that one. Uh, something on trading view. Hey, infinitely. And Arturo. We got three people watching right now. I just started the stream, though. Morning, Mason. Uh, and shouldn't be a big deal at all. All right, here he comes. All right. Back to my uh, waves. I'll stay panelist for a while. Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, depending on, depending on uh, where you are at. Uh, let me see the chat. Stephen, happy April Fools to you too. Angie says, "Finally in the pit." You're welcome. Gaston, hello. Robert, hello. Ro uh, another Robert. Chris, Cyrus. Oh yes, I'm enjoying the cool breeze. Yes, with the fan right in my face and all the other good stuff. But I still have the humidity. Hope everybody's doing well today. Hope everybody had a nice holiday weekend. I'm curious. Do you think a lot of folks are playing hooky, or do you think most folks are back to work now? Welcome, Phil. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, Scott. Um, I Well, I didn't really play hooky. The market was closed. If the market was open, I wouldn't. But based on my e uh, uh, telegram alerts to you guys, you tell me if I play, was playing hooky or not. In fact, the market predictable thing, the eclipse will make any <laughs> Only the people who think that tides and planets affect the markets. <laughs> no, the, the eclipse is not going to make any difference. Well, in here, it's already 12.03, so we're at that morning. Hope everybody's doing good. Now, remember that trade? By the way, I'm going to gloat a little bit because it's a good time to do so. I had two or three people send me an email uh, telling me... Uh, share my screen here. Telling me or critiquing me on this trade that we closed out at a profit today. So we got in right here. We had a drawdown of two days, and we got out today, uh, right around here somewhere. Um, let's see here. Where's my chat? There's my chat. There's no reason for the drop in the S&P. It's really not a major drop. Um, I, I wouldn't really call this a major drop. I would I would call this more of just a very – I mean, we we literally went – we we erased one day of gains. We're at uh, on Thursday's levels right now. Let me show you this. Look, this is the this is the daily. This is where we're at right now. This is Friday. This is Thursday. So I, I wouldn't really call this a big drop. If you even want to call it a drop, I mean we're down 0.28 on the on the S and P. This to me smells a lot more like a typical rotational quiet Monday with where there's not a lot going on. Look at you, Uncle Lorne. Uncle Lauren, you're taking too much risk, my friend, unless you got into that stock at way after I did. Uh, Paul says he can't see my screen. Matt, can you see my screen? Mm -hmm. Okay, I have VST on my screen right now. Look at you. And I know Matt is reposting all of those great trades right now in the pit. Right, Matt? In the uh, tele in the in our Telegram channel. Am I correct, Matt? Yep. All right. Uh, Alex says came late to VSP, miserable 80%. You closed it for a miserable 80%? <laughs> uh, 
I'll close things for a miserable 80% every day of the week and twice on Sunday. Yeah, don't do that, Uncle Lauren. I'm, I'm just being honest with you. You're over leveraging yourself. Okay, let's talk about some good stuff. I got stopped out on a, on a lot of my trades with a 100 stop loss. Who told you to use a $100 stop loss? A, why would you use a stop loss? B, why would you use a $100 stop loss? You're not driven to succeed if you're going to be using a $100 stop loss. You're just trading your PL, buddy. That doesn't work. Alex says, yes, I feel it is not a get rich quick scheme. Yeah, I'm not big on the get rich quick schemes. Um, you're so bad, only 2% profit on the stock, I will starve. All right, well, what can I tell you? Uh, I'm, I'm going to start in about 30 seconds, which was what? Uh, it was the VST trade. Good. Good. So uh, we have one more that's in the members area. Buck says, on the serious note, are the gains we're seeing in the S&P actual the result of inflation and money printing? Well, it depends, Buck. It depends on what time period you're talking about. Can you give me a time, time period? Good, Richard. So happy to hear that. That makes me so happy. That thing went against us like three bucks. We don't have trades going against us very often in the pit, but this one did. And please don't say the one we're in right now. We're in a trade right now. We're just uh, uh, buck. Uh, it's a combination of things. You're you're asking a very you're asking a really good question, but um, it's a combination of of many many things. And if I start talking about it, I'm not going to stop for the next forty five minutes. But in a broad in a broad sense, it's a combination of inflation, not printing money. That stopped. It's a it's a matter of inflation, the U.S. dollar global economy, uh, the the bounce back from the COVID and a very fragmented market that's still correcting itself from the core COVID levels. And it also has a lot to do with the small caps not being able to get it up. I could talk about it for about an hour, I, 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 but I think there's a better way for us to spend our time, but it is a good question. And if you send me a detailed email at roger at rogerscott.com, I would love to talk to you about it at length. Um, speaking of which, look at that. Pink sparkles up 35%. Good, good, good. Now you guys are making me happy. How many people are in the room, by the way? 258. All right, we're gearing up. So um, there are a few things that I want to talk to you about. Now, usually, as you guys know, Matt deals with seasonality towards the end of the session. But today I want to talk about seasonality in the beginning of the session. And... Uh, I was working yesterday feverishly to bring you this information. I send you a telegram in the main in the main members area uh, explaining it. So uh, do you guys know what I'm talking about? Did you guys see the graph? I hope you guys didn't mute the main telegram channel because I put gold nuggets in there all the time. Do you guys want to hear about the, the next two weeks seasonality, uh, tax day seasonality, pre-tax day seasonality? post-tax seasonality, I could assure you Kramer is not going to be talking about it today. Okay. All right. So let's do that. There's some good stuff. So Matt, why don't you start, take a 10, 15 minutes, talk about what we uh, talk about and maybe graphically show the back test that you, you, you did today. Talk a few minutes about it. And uh, I will then take over the screen, go through my spiel, and then you could do the seasonality that you regularly do at the end. Okay. All right, go ahead. Hey, Frosty, how are you? Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, the first... Uh, now, you what you may see... What you will see and what Matt is what you will see in the Telegram channel and what Matt is showing you are two different assets. I used a asset that has 62 years of data. Matt used one that has 55 years of data. So you're seeing the, the, the results are the same, but the uh, uh, the numbers, I mean, the results are the same. They're saying it's exactly the same thing, but the numbers are slightly different. So if you see the little different numbers in here versus the Telegram channel, it's a, it's a, it's just a slightly different test using slightly different data, but it's the same same thing. So just want to make sure you guys know that. Go ahead, Matt. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, you. we're using the. Uh, we can go back to 1970. 
Instead of 19... Uh, 52. 52, yeah, that's all. Okay. Uh, the first... Uh, well, there's three tests here. The first one is the end of March, so the last day of March, you get in and then you get out on tax day or you know the day after, the soonest available trading day after tax day or on tax day, which is April 15th. And here are the results. So just to be clear, this is going back to 1970, Till present, till obviously last year, because we can't go into the future. And this is, say again what this test is. This is getting in on the end of March, the last trading day of March, and getting out on April 15th. Yes, Monday is not a breakout. Listen to what Bodine just says. Monday is not a breakout run day. It usually stands in a range. Monday tends to be this kind of a day, like a... That's why I like to trade Monday afternoons a lot better than Monday mornings. And I like and I'm looking right now for swing trades for you guys. And in about an hour or two, about an hour or two, I'll be looking for day trades. But I'm not there right now. I, I, I don't feel I, you know, I'm not going to do what I don't what doesn't feel right. The, the day after Paul, the day after tax day, the day after ta the closing of tax day, right, Matt? Yeah, the close of tax closing day. of 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 close of tax day. So that's that. All right, show us the other one now. There's the graph as well. Now, interestingly, the win rate is not high, yeah. but the profit factor is very high. What does that, how do you interpret that? That means in those 15 days or those two weeks, the gains didn't come uh, like this. The, 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 the amount gained was big, but the number of days was low. So it looked to me the market was very choppy and then just had a couple of really big days in the in that two-week period. I mean, we can analyze a trade by trade, but I could just tell you that by looking at it, that's that's what it's at. Uh, so let's do the next one, Matt. Okay. That would be getting in on tax day and getting out at the end of April. So this is getting... Now, is this getting in... After at the end of the day on tax day, yeah, okay. So, this or, is getting in on the close of tax day or the next available trading day, or the or yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's a like a holiday, the 15th is a holiday, so whatever the next day is, it's at the end of that day. So, basically, end of day tax day, and then you're getting out on the last day of April, right? So, the last two weeks of April, not the first two weeks of April, this is the last two week of April. That seems to work a little it's bit. It's just better. once we're only trading one, we're only testing one symbol. He'll give you the symbol if you want. Uh, so in order to go back to 1970, I'm using uh, GSPC, which is just the S&P index ticker. Cyrus, I don't think earnings has anything to do with it because earnings start immediately after that. But stocks usually get uh, get pretty strong heading into first quarter earnings, and I think that's what this is all about. If you want my if you want my opinion ahead of it. So I think it has a lot to do with it, but it's but I don't think it's there's a direct correlation. I think it's more of like the hype prior to earnings. Go ahead, Matt. Yeah. Uh, so April is a pretty damn good month for stocks. Yep. And then if you were to buy the last test was just watch this tax day. This is buying the day at the close the day before tax day and and so this is buying at the close on tax day. on tax day and then getting out. The next day. The next day. Okay. So whatever tax day is, whatever the day you have to file, buying on that day and getting out the next day at the close. There it is right there. I thought you guys would like this this test. And we're going back like 50 years. So um, uh, what is... 54. 54 what? 54 years. 54 years. Yeah, this is 54 years. Yeah, so basic, basically, April is a really good month for, uh, for, 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 for stocks. The first two weeks of April beat any other two weeks of the year. Uh, tax buying the day of tax day and selling the next day is very profitable. And generally speaking, tax uh, fed, uh, April is a friendly day to the stock market. Yeah. Thought you guys would want to know that. I'm sure. I'm sure Kramer's on it right now. 
screen too small to read? Ralph, the screen is the entire size. Our pictures are about this big. He's literally sharing his screen, and he just made the numbers even bigger. Can you guys see that? You, you, you got, yeah, show him the profit factor. 2.39. That's a good profit factor. That's a really good profit factor. I'd say the equity curve on this one's probably the smoothest. That's after, right? This is just the one day. Yeah. The one day getting in on tax day and getting out the next day. The problem is I don't think the profit, I don't think the win rate is high. The win rate is 60, 65%. So you see the win rates on these are not high. They're in the high 50s, low 60s, which is telling us the money's coming not from consecutive days, but from good, good big moves. Profit factor uh, is is it's net gain over net loss over all your trades. So if you made five hundred dollars over all of your trades, and then on all your losing trades you lost two hundred and fifty dollars in total, you'd have a profit factor of two. In real life, anything over one point five is is very good over time, like over time time, not over three days or five trades over time. Our profit factor since December first on all of our programs combined, uh, not except the pit, that's in its own little world, um, is 2.02, .02, which is amazing. Just really, really good. Really, really good. Anything below 1.5, I'm not even going to show you. Um, if the pullback in TLT today may be an opportunity for calls in June. Uh, no, Lisa. Lisa, let me... Uh, are you done, Matt? Uh, yeah, With I mean, that's what we ran... I yep. can make any adjustments if we want to look, we want to tweak anything. No, no, it's perfect. Get in on tax day, get in the end. And yes, you got it, Ann. The deadline on tax day, whatever the deadline day on tax day where you have to file by midnight, or you can go to the to the to the post office and get a timestamp, federal timestamp, that day. That day and get out the next day. You you just use the S and P five hundred, just spy. You could just use spy. He showed you this on an on a different variation of the spy, the one that's been around for fifty years versus the ETF. But you could just use the ETF. You could use the spy. Um. So there was something I wanted to talk to you guys. Oh yes, 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 yes. So uh, Annie, I uh, not not Annie. Sorry, I'm picking on the wrong person. Um, Lisa, I could tell by your question that you are not watching my morning videos. How can I tell? Let me show you. Because every morning, every morning, every morning on my morning video, I've been showing you guys this graph. Every single day. Where's my... Where's my... I'm not screen sharing. Let me screen share. No, you're not. It'd be nice to screen share. Okay, there we go. Now I'm screen sharing. Yes, Buck, they are recorded live. As we are doing them, they are recorded. And so are these. Look, Buck, let me show you. For anybody who wants to watch these meetings, you go to YouTube, go to Roger Scott, you go, you hit this, here's that video I promised you guys. When when I'm not live, anytime I'm live, it'll show you the live right here, or just go live right here, the live tab, and you could see me live, you could watch my video from this morning, you can watch my video from Friday afternoon. You can watch my video from Friday morning. They're all here. They're all here. Just hit subscribe and the bell, and it'll notify you when I'm live. Pretty cool. So somebody asked me about the bond market. I showed the, I've been showing this graph now for how long? Maybe a month and a half, almost every single day. And I, sh I said very clearly this morning that I think this is the top. I went... You can watch the video. And then I said, I think we're going to break down. We 
broke down. And I, I think we're going to stay in this range and continue building this triangle that I drew about a month ago. Tell me that I didn't. I'm daring anybody here to tell me that I did. Because <laughs> I show it to you every time we're here. I do this. I show you. Um, I use this graph right here, but it's the same thing. Same triangle. Yeah. Yeah, it's all good. Buck, you didn't you, you, you didn't ask. You didn't ask. It's all good. These are good questions. Uh, do I ever get tired of being right? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, Dom says tax day is April 15th, except the 15th falls on a week. That's right. It doesn't always have to be the 15th. Uh, the, 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 the falls on Monday, Massachusetts. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's whatever tax day is. Look, the point of this test was to show you that April, generally speaking, is a very strong day for the uh, month for the stock market. Don't try to, you know, fit curve fit your ideas into it. Just take it for, with that, that it's a strong day on the stock market. So now I think we're going to continue moving higher right up here. So I don't think selling calls right now is a great idea because we haven't broken below this channel. Had we broken below this channel on the bonds, then I would think it would be a great idea, but we haven't broken in. So I think we're just going to continue building this channel, which is what I've been saying every morning and then showing you this exact same picture. I'm very boring like that, but what are you going to do? Um, okay. So um, I don't want to, I don't want, I want to make sure that I cover everything today. So we covered the seasonality. We talked about the bond market. Uh, I talked this morning about the Fed and how, again, the Fed is, the, the Fed is saying we need to see more evidence. We need to see more evidence. Meanwhile, the the odds went from 58% to 64% overnight, and now they're back down because this, this when it goes down, that's more pe people coming into the room and trying to talk some sense into that dense kid who still thinks he's getting that bike this summer. You know, more folks are coming in. Adults are coming in going, look, uh, Tommy boy, uh, you're probably not going to get your bike this summer. No, no, I am. I am. I am. Well, today, a few more adults came in the room and t started talking some sense into him. But I think he's going to change his mind as soon as they leave the room. And he's going to go back up here, which means he, he still thinks he's going to get it. Uh, Dan says, I closed my TLT bull put spread this morning. Trade set up last Thursday. Good for you. Good for you. I'm glad we could help. Matt, get that. That kid really is holding on to that bike. You know, by the time it's all said and done, we're going to feel so bad for the kid. We're going to want to buy him a bike. All right. But you guys get the analogy I'm making. So uh, this puts more pressure on the stock market. Do I think the stock market has a lot of pressure? I mean, let's be serious here. I mean, look, we're 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 literally within half a point of an all-time high right now. If this market was bearish in any shape, way, or form, it would fall like a flag, and and folks would be taking their taking their gains. A lot of folks are in profit zone. The market is still bullish, and every time the bears come in, the bulls remind them who is in control. So um, again, do I expect this to break down? Even if I was, I wouldn't expect it to happen beginning of this week. I would expect it to happen closer to Friday when we have the employment data report. But I really don't think it's going to break. I think it's going to consolidate. And I think this week is going to be more or less choppy. And I think we're going we're gonna to start getting a little more bullish as the week progresses into next week. But overall, just so you know, we do have tailwind in our back in April. And we have China. China came out with some really good numbers. China helps us a lot more than you folks can, can imagine. And the thing, the, I think also the fact that the bond market is stable, and this is a stable bond market, and vol, you know, look at volatility. I mean, this is VIX. That's why it's so hard to write option for anything good right now, that I think we're okay. I don't think you should be interpreting today as anything more than a rotational Monday that usually does this. Seasonally, that's what happens. Ken says, I don't trust, I don't think anybody trusts them, but I think that whether they're, tr it's true or not, whatever they are saying is getting priced into the market. So it's not about the truth. It's about what is, what the, it's about the, the, the catalyst of what we're reacting to, if that means anything. <laughs> Jeffrey, I love Jeffrey. He's, he's great. I like that guy a lot. He's a, he's a good guy. Real, real good guy. And he's not stupid either. He's smart. 
Like him a lot. Very good guy. Okay, so let me give you guys the stocks that I'm looking at. I'll start with the short side, and then I'll do the long side. Um, now, Roger, why are you giving us short stocks if you don't want us to trade to the short side? Well, because your odds are much better trading to the long side right now. Um, here's why. For us to be, for us to make money to the long side, we have to be broadly right because the market has so much liquidity in it. And even if we're wrong for a day or two, the market tends to come back. The market tends to be forgiving. Okay. A lot more forgiving now than it usually is. Not as much as it was two months ago, but still forgiving. The, the short side isn't forgiving. What do I mean by that? Well, let's say you have a, let's just say this is a, well, you know what? Why don't we, why don't I give you a real example? So let's just, uh, let's use, I want something that's, okay, here, here's a perfect example. The stock pen, that's eh, still not a great example. It's pretty, pretty, uh, can't find, a, I can't find a bad short today. Let's see if, no, whoops. Okay, I found, I think I found one. So here's a, here's an asset. This is an ETF. This is, a, one second, hold on. Sorry about that. So look at this asset right here. This is an EWZ ETF. It's a Brazilian ETF. Can't look at Amazon. Amazon's moving higher. I want something that's moving lower randomly. You could say this is random. This is pretty random. This, I mean, this can go up, down. This is pretty random. The point I'm making is this. If something is moving down randomly without higher volume and the market's making all-time highs, you're not going to lose a lot of money on your short side, but you're short, but it's going to, it's much harder for stocks to go down when markets, when liquidity is moving into the market. Imagine you have a boat that's not made so well and but you got tides lifting it lifting it lifting it lifting it it's it's going to move you know we want to have wind in our back now well, does that mean when markets are bullish you shouldn't trade short no no that's not what i mean there's always an opportunity for a short side but right now when markets are so purposefully bullish and you're looking for short opportunities you want aggressive shorts you don't want random shorts like there's a lot of stocks right now where we're, especially in the in our swing trading programs that we're looking at, like GE, uh, like AbV, like uh, United Healthcare. Uh, those stocks are not purposefully moving higher; they're randomly moving higher, and then they're just kind of drifting higher. Well, we're moving along with the trend, but the problem is, even if we're if we're moving with a short stock with a downtrend, all right. The problem is if the market, if liquidity is coming into the market, it'll just kind of sit there. It'll sit there and it'll just go, da, na, 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 na. And it'll sit there and it'll sit there and it won't give us what we want. It won't take anything away from us either. The point is if the market is not literally sitting at an all-time high or like a bar away, a day away from an all-time high, if it's kind of consolidating, like, like when the market was, say, right here doing this or doing this, that's okay, but when you have a, a pattern like this, when you're literally five ticks away from an all-time high, it, 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 it's not going to help you. Your shorts aren't going to help you as much unless they're purposeful shorts. So I'm going to show you purposeful shorts today so you could see what we want in those shorts, okay? Otherwise, it's just not worth it because you're going to be caught up in just a random, uh, you're not going to make or lose. You're just going to be kind of, oh, it's up. 50 cents. Oh, it's down 50 cents. Oh, it's up 50 cents. So it's just going to kind of do this. Exactly. You don't want to go against long-term relative strength. And by the way, casinos are very strong today. You know why casinos are very strong today? Because China is very strong today. Always focus on China. China has a lot of market cap coming into the market. So let's, let's, uh, Lulu, let's look at Lulu. Lulu is breaking lower. Lulu's telling us today on a strong day that it ain't going to have any of it. It's a purposeful bear. If Lulu was right here today, if Lulu was one of these two bars today, 
I would say it's no good. But but Lulu is making literally Lulu is, is taking a position. Lulu's saying, "Hey, screw you, bull market. I'm going to go lower. I'm going to go lower." Matter of fact, the last five bars when the market did this. What did Lulu do? Opposite. That's what you want. That's a purposeful short. Okay. That's the kind of short you want. So we would put our stop loss right here. 406, say it around that area. We would be looking at, and volume, good volume helps too. Not It's not a maker or breaker, but it helps. We would go 18 days out till April 19th. We would go we would go right here eighteen days out. Uh, there's no liquidity here. I'll tell you what, just do just do one of these two, 65 or 67 delta, which will put you at 40750 or 410 calls. Also, what you could do is um Yeah, we're looking at puts. No, I would do put spread here. And then what I would do is I would go ahead and sell the 375. No, we're doing a put debit spread, not a credit spread. We're buying the 407 or 410, and we're selling the cheaper one, the 370. It's a debit spread, not a credit spread PM. I am looking at puts on Lulu right here. Here's puts. Here's puts. I, I t I'm telling you guys are telling you want me to tell me what I should be doing or do you want me to tell you what you should be doing? I'm telling you a put spread. It broke the low. It's not, it doesn't have an inside range. If it had an inside range, then you do a call spread, you know? All right, let's continue a lot, Ron, a lot, a lot, a lot. Yes, I see it as a leading down stock because it's bucking the trend. It's a purposeful stock. I just got done explaining to you that there's two kinds of stocks. Some that will sit there, that's the ones you want to do the call spreads on. And some that will continue going down. This one just broke the low when the market is literally going high for the, up for the last 20 minutes. I think I'm answering all of your questions that you're asking me after the fact. <laughs> like, Let's not have a debate here. When you guys have a win rate of over 95%, then you can tell me your advice. Um, next one, MDLZ. Good. All right. Another one here, MDLZ. Notice it broke below this level. Now, it's not as purposeful as Lulu. It's just kind of doing this, but it's also purposeful stock. Would I be aggressive on as aggressive on Lulu as this one? No. Would I consider doing a uh would I consider doing a um uh a, a call spread on this one? Possibly if it was very far out of the money. Don't know if you're gonna get uh with this low volatility, you're gonna have the opportunity on that. You're welcome, uh Buck. Matt's gonna put that in the members area because it's a nice thing to say. Uh so but just in case, I would put my stop, my buy stop right here at 71. I would be looking at the right here. Oh, nope, that's four days. That's no good. 18 days out. We want to have a 76 delta, which would put us at the 71 puts for me, MDLS, April 19th. I don't like this one as much as I like uh, Lulu. Love that name, Lulu. Let's do the next one. EWZ. This same thing, I would say the same thing about this one as, as Mandela's, not nearly as purposeful as Lulu. Look at the difference. Look at Lulu. Broke below the 200-day moving average. Can't keep it up. More downside, where this is kind of drifting. 
kind of drifting. This low hasn't even broken this low. Would I do a call here? Probably more so. But I, I wouldn't do that right now. I'm not actually, let's not do anything with this one. It's kind of still in a random range. Next one, SNN. Oh, that's very purposeful right there. Look at it today. It gapped down. It went down. And look how it's sitting below the VWAP the entire day. Literally sitting at the lows. Now, the market's going down. Okay, it's sitting at the lows. But the market's been going up now for 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 30, 34, 30, 35 minutes. What has this stock been doing for 35 minutes? Nothing. That's a good stock. It's a good stock. It's purposeful. That move is purposeful. R Angie, relative weakness, not relative strength. Relative weakness. You got it, but you got it backwards. So we would put a stop loss right here at about 25 uh, high, t uh, low 25s. That's what I want to see, PM. I want to see 18 days out, delta of 67. Right here, strike price of 25 puts on SNN. Again, please, if you are going to go short any of these stocks, and you, you you don't have to, but if you are, SNN looks good, Lulu looks good. The other are, eh. Same thing with this one. It looks okay. It looks like it's more random than anything else. Etsy, let's look at Etsy. Um, almost there. Maybe a little bit more. I want a little heart. Um, how's the volume here? Hmm. Okay, we'll see. Let's continue with our, our picks. Pen. Um, again, mostly random, but it looks like it's going to continue moving down. Cyrus had it with P. Different, different stock symbol. Different stock symbol. I gave that one this morning, Leonard. You should watch my morning videos. I would put a stop loss right here above this level right here at about 229.75. Uh, we would be looking at a delta of 74, 18 days out. We would be looking at a strike price of 230. Spreads are awful. You, would, you don't want to do this stock. Spreads are all unless you're just trading the stock. And last but not least, Nike. The Nike, I want to see Nike break down. I would put an alert on Nike at the $91 level. But why, Roger? You could sell it now at 92. Why do you want to sell it at 91? Because I don't want to sit in it for two months while it's building a base. Is that a, is that a good answer? All right. Whatever you guys can think of asking me, I've already answered for you ahead of time. Uh, 90, low 96s, which, which be, would be your stop loss level. We would go 18 days out. 72 delta. 96 put. All my videos are on YouTube. 96 put, uh, 18 days out. Right here. Good spread too. Now again, if you don't if you don't mind sitting on Nike for a little bit, it may be okay, but I would rather it break lower because I think once it breaks lower, it's gonna go to the next, it's gonna accept the next level lower. And once it accepts the next level lower, it'll be easier for funds to justify liquidating that stock. Um, wow, 330 people in the room. How many you got on YouTube, Matt? 41. Wow. Every day, we're almost every day we're breaking records. Ken, do you remember when we had 100 people in this room? Year, it was a long time ago, but... All right, let's do more like 150. Okay, it was a while ago, <laughs> It's a while ago. All right, let's now go to the long side. What about how do how do I think you guys should approach the long side this week? Gaston, China, uh, China came out with numbers that they were very weak on Nike just a few weeks ago. One of the reasons why the stock dropped was because of weakness from China. So I don't think in the last week and a half, one of the things we were looking for and talking about here, it's a good question. It's a fair question. Was 
how Nike did in China, and I wanted to wait for their earnings to report to come out. I even made a big stink on this on the broadcast here, and I said, and on Telegram, and I said, I'm very interested in how Nike did in China. It didn't do well, so we 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 did look at that. It, the answer was no, no, no good, no bueno. It's a good point, but we did we did uh, we did check it out. I don't think anything changed in the last five or, or six. Let's see how many sessions. One, two, three, four, five, six sessions. I don't think anything changed. Gee, Michael, uh, I gotta I gotta get in on uh, I gotta uh, I gotta get in on this. How much are you leveraging? And uh, that's what I'm curious. Look at that, 2,800. Let me look at SNN. It didn't do anything, though. How do you, how, how much, how many shares did you have? Did you have like three, like, like 10,000 shares or something? I'm curious. I, I'm just curious. I'm glad you did, but all right. Uh, they should buy more Nike sneakers, then it would go up. Okay. 3,000 shares. Okay. Where can we find education on how China affects U.S. markets? I had no, not considered this until you mentioned it. Uh, Buck, I talk about it every single day in the morning when I do my China uh, outlook. All you got to do is just come to my report. I covered every single morning because China's impact to our morning is very, it's, 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 a, it's a tailwind sometimes. So I talk about it. Uh, I talk about it in my morning call every day, every single morning. Just come on and uh, you'll check it out. And Japan, yes. And Europe, too. All right. All right. All right. So uh, let's now talk about our long stocks. Loving, loving, loving. Um, let's switch to calls. I'm loving, loving, loving the CVX right now. Above the 200-day moving average. Very purposeful move. Uh, energy strong. That's right, Anastasia. Yeah. Yeah. I highlight their most important things. They have great analysts there. Huh, look at you. Look at these folks. They're making money on SNN. That's good. So anyway, I like this stock. Uh, I would put a stop loss right here around um, 156, 156-ish area, if you will. I would look at uh, these you'll find really good clean options on, I could assure you. Uh, right here, 81 Delta. 155 call, 10 cents spread. 10 cents spread. Robert, I, I'm not driving the SNN bus. I you're gonna have to they'll they'll tell you whatever you need to know. I'm not, this is not I have nothing to do with it. What is it with SNN? Is it moving or I'm not seeing anything really crazy on this SNN. Whatever. Okay, so CVX. Uh, I like CVX. Oh, my pleasure, Buck. Uh, let's now talk about the next one. BFP. Stock is looking fantastic. And intraday, it's looking fantastic too, by the way. I, I love these rounded bottoms. Yeah, Alex, you're absolutely right. Very much so. Uh, I like the calls. I like the 15-day moving averages, your stop loss. This pivot right here works really well because it can negate a trade better than anything. It's about 5504 level. You would go 18 days out till April 19th expiration. We would look at 77 delta and we would look at the 55 call right here. This one will work just well for you yeah we're going 419 unless unless there are no 419s iphone looks like the market's starting to move a little higher hopefully we can get that stock that we have in our uh in the pit to rally a little bit we don't need much just a little we can off to a good start And all of you who said that F, all of you, only two or three of you who thought that F, FST was a bad trade, it wasn't. Cyrus, I like Micron too. I don't know how it's doing right now, but I'll have to look at it. But I like Micron. I like Micron. I almost bought it this morning, but I like to wait for Monday afternoons. And I'll talk about that more in a minute. Um, let's go to the next one here. 
go to the next one. Yeah, 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 it's doing well. Um, BBY, it's got a nice uh, ascending triangle here going on. Uh, I don't want to, well, I can draw it here, yes. You guys get the idea. Looks like it's it's moving in the upper end of the range. Nice, Deb. That's good. I'm sure Matt will write that down. Uh, 18 days out. April 19th expiration. These should be ooh, no problem with liquidity. 74 delta, 80 calls for BBY. When I lived in LA, I used to I used to go there all the time. They, there was one right by my house, but I haven't been to one in ages. I don't even know if they... I know they have one here. Um, I want to see the stock break out higher. Civi, forget about Civi. Next one, FTRE. This is a nice stock. Manny, somebody here will post it for you. If not, I'll post it again, no problem. But I'm sure somebody will be nice enough to post it. I would use the 15-day EMA, which is right at 39. I would go 18 days out till April 19. I would go to the 89 Delta, which would put me at 37.50 call. Next one, JKN. JKN. Uh, what, is, what happened to my JK? Oh, JXN, sorry. Um, yes, I'm still bullish on home builders. I'm getting increasingly more bullish on home builders, actually. Home builders was one of the top uh, ETFs that I picked this morning. You guys should really come to my morning session. I do everything possible to m not mix up what I'm going to talk about here versus what I'm going to talk what I talk about in the morning. I really do. And I try to pick different stocks for you. So it's not like a rehash of what I'm what I'm doing here. It really is a different a, it's more of like overnight and all that because I'm noticing that a lot of people are asking me questions here that I've already answered in the morning. That's the only reason why I bring it up. Uh JXN Look at that. It almost touched the eight-day moving average today. I like when stocks almost hit the uh, moving average. That makes me very, very happy. I like that. I would put my stop right at the 15-day EMA. Yep, that's right. Again, we're going to April 19th. We're going to go to delta of 64 because there just isn't anything in between us here. That's right, Ben. You got it. That's exactly right. And we would look at a 60 call. Hub. I like how the stock is is holding up around here. It really does look good and it looks like it can it can it can after this consolidation give us a little more upside. Don't know how liquid the options are. We're going to find out in about a minute. They look horrible. So let's just forget about this. Sixty-five calls. Yes, sixty-five calls. Sixty-four delta. You're right. And is that not what I said? Let's continue. BCC. BCC. B C C, like this, like this, like this. I like my stop at about one forty eight seventy five ish. Uh, eighteen days out, April nineteenth. We're looking at a seventy eight delta, which it's the, the options on this suck. Sorry, I I can't do anything about that. Um, G M S. Oops, G M S. Also a fantastic looking stock. We've talked about this stock before. Uh, stop loss would go right here at 95. Uh, we would put a delta 18 days out, April 19th, 90 delta, strike uh, delta of 90, strike price of 95 right here. You can probably get these at a, at a good spread if you, if you work the order. Oh, we a mess. Uh, starting to get a little choppy. I would just say forget it to this one for a while. 
let's let's wait for it to straighten out. Sky West. Oh, this is a nice one. Not choppy. I like this one. Stop loss right at the 15 day AMA, 67.35. 90 Delta, uh, 65 calls. That's all I've got for you guys today. I've got nothing else. Um, Matt, why don't you take us through the seasonality for the week, for this week? And, you know, this will give us some good tips to see whether this week or next week is the real strong week, whether this week, I think from last Friday, from what Matt showed us, my pleasure, Anastasia. Gaming stocks look great, but I'm not, they're not on my radar, which typically means they're not doing anything beyond congestion. Yeah, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't go into anything like that. I would wait a little, a little too much, a little too much, but it's good for economy. It's good for all the other stocks, but don't, don't fall for this just yet. Wait, give it another day or so. No problem, Mermis. All right, Matt, take us away. There we go. Okay, here is the weekly seasonality graph again. Uh, I know you just talked about that. Overall, somewhat bullish, a little choppy, not super definitive, but uh, not a lot of downside action, I would say. Not entirely long, but definitely not short seasonally. Looks like it's starting to pick up. Uh, here is today's seasonality for at the close. Um, long side isn't super convincing. Uh, we'll we'll take a look. Although the profit factors are pretty strong, so uh, that would lead me to believe that we are mostly upside. And if we look at the short side, it's the short system. Interesting technologies in the short side. What do you mean? This is the short side, right? This right here is the short side, yeah. Yeah, so I said technologies. I'm just seeing te technology there. Yeah, but it's not good. It's bad. No, no, no. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Yeah. It'll show up either way. Right, right, right. these right. profit factors. Yeah. None of them are good except for no. basic material. Interesting. Um, but that's long and short, so that more oscillation than anything else. Uh, XHB is interesting right here. Short side for home builders. Interesting. That would signify rates going higher. That would be Johnny or or whatever his name is, kid throwing a tan, tan, tamper tantrum. Yeah. And then uh, 10 day hold, we are mostly bullish, but not super strong. The profit factors are good. The accuracy isn't awesome. So, you know, just kind of a slow grind up seasonally. That's two weeks worth of data. So, sorry, that's measuring two weeks. That's, you know, as long as there existed all the way back up to 1990. So it's 30 plus years of data, but it's just looking at a two week period. Okay, here is the long side. Uh, we always like to look at the overall number, and it's 148, which is pretty weak. So only about. Uh, less than a third of the stocks are, are a buy on the long system. So that is not super strong. Uh, let's compare it with the short side. Short side's even shorter, 106. So again, just kind of hanging out in the middle. Uh, 10 day hold. Yeah, 10 day hold 65. So not a lot here today. Really isn't. It's a Monday. Not super uncommon. It's actually very common for Mondays to be uh this kind of a day. Yeah, just dull. And and to and starting to recover or kind of just sitting there and just doing this till Monday afternoon. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we we start seeing upside. That's very, very common. 
yeah, I would I would probably just kind of wait. Although, yeah, that's no good. ZTS looks like a good short. Oh, someone asked. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, there's really not much here, Roger. I can okay. kick it back to you. All right. All right, guys. That's all I have for today. Remember, Mondays, so for, for broad structure of the market, Friday and Mondays tend to be these type of days. So here's how you need to look at it. This is not a this is general rule. It doesn't mean it happens every week, okay? Typically, over the last 50 years, markets tend to be pushed higher on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And then Thursday, sometimes, and then Fridays, they start to null and go a little down. And Mondays, they start going down even more. And then Monday afternoon, they start poaching their head again and waiting for that Tuesday breakfast. So they get fed Tuesday, Monday night till Wednesday night. That's your that's your broad season. That's your broad bullish window right there. And then Thursday night till Monday afternoon, they tend to correct a lot of what they did the three days before. Does that kind of make sense? And this is not my opinion. This is based on season my this is based on us using Amy Broker and backtesting this. So this isn't what I think. This is for better or worse, this is what it's been. So um Where's the, where's my chat? It, it is what it is. So so again, I'm just trying to kind of give you. That's why a lot of times what you see Matt and I do is start loading up stocks Monday Monday second half of the day. Matter mm -hmm. of fact, uh, what's the one where that I I created for stuff for um, what's her name Celeste and then True Trend Pro True Trend Pro. We buy Monday afternoons and then we 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 sell them after the pop. Uh, over a weekend for brokers and get filled Monday afternoon, maybe PM, maybe a lot of rotation, reorganization, profit taking. Uh, again, I can't be more specific with you, but if you were to put days, it would be kind of like Tuesday would be a really big green day. Wednesday would be a big green, a, me a medium green day. Thursday would be a light green day. Friday would be a pinkish day. Monday would be a reddish day till the afternoon, and then we start all over again. I hope that gives you guys a, a good understanding of how it works. That's why I never try. That's why you don't see me day trading stocks usually Monday mornings, unless there's something special. I usually can get a better trade Monday afternoon because it tends to it tends to do it tends to do this. And also remember something else. Oh yeah, this isn't important at all. Just FYI, today's the first day of the quarter. Institutions buy and rebalance beginning of the quarters. The strongest stocks at the end of today tend to see a lot of follow through over the quarter. I'm going to repeat what I just said. It's only of significant importance to you, right? I mean, we can all, I mean, it's only a way to project the strongest stocks. So uh, um, first day of the quarter, institutions rebalance their portfolios Usually they 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 program their buying programs for the rest of the quarter. The stocks that do the most today tend to have a lot of follow through. Do you guys understand the significance of what I just said? The importance of what I just said? Let me rephrase it for you. The stuff that goes up today may continue going up more than others for the re for the for the remainder of the quarter. Just thought you'd want to know about that. I'm sure Kramer's all over that. All right. Um Trisha, we just look at the replay. We talked about it. We we talked about it at length. Yeah, for three months. All right, guys. We'll talk later. If you have any questions, Trisha, just email us. I'll I'll answer it for you. Spy, just use spy. You don't have to use GSPC. Just use the spy. Bye, guys. Have a great day. Bye, everyone.